No. The thing is like this. It's on now, is it? Yeah. I can start and say, uh, what well, we try to start like it then. Is that on or when well, I talk to you before it turns on? No, oh, yeah. talk away. Talk away as it is now. Yeah. Well, I can go back to 1925 mm -hmm. to what I know of Greenspan, in which is in Bonavista Bay, on the north side of Bonavista Bay, Greenspan. Mm -hmm. The population at that time, 1925, was 1,211 people. So that's how many people were there, 1,211. And it was known <coughs> for the capital of Bonavista Bay, nor on north, Bonavista Bay, north. And uh, it was, uh, the industry was cod fishery and uh, seal fishery. That was that was that was, a, that was a, the industry of Greenspan. It had a lot of people going to the sea, fishery schooners and to the sea, seal steamers. And by the way, it, Greenspan had a captain. His name was Darius Blanford, and he made the quickest trip in the seal fishery. He was gone nine days and he brought in a full load in nine days hmm. as a record how long would it normally take him well you know a couple of months month and a half or a month he, went. he left and went and got a you know well, what years that now that, you know this 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 is not my time eh? oh. you know. then we had a, a time of greenspan then we had another captain which is captain Peter Carter, he brought in the heaviest weight of seals that was ever brought in Newfoundland. Yeah. Right up to now. Eh? Even right up, right up to the present day time. He had 49,000. He had the heaviest weight. But Captain Blackwood in the imaging beat him. In Because imaging was an icebreaker. And the steamer that he had was only a coal, uh, uh, for bringing coal from North Sydney, to no comparison. But the Royal Splam, or Captain Peter Carter, brought in the heaviest way to seals that <coughs> ever was brought in in Newfoundland. Well, that's, that's, that's been established. In, New, in my time in Greenspan, it was a real beehive, what do you call it? Yes, beehive of the place. We had all the islands on the outside. We had Fair Island. We had Dare Island, we had Bragg's Island, we had Sydney Coven, and we had New Arbor, New, and then was Newport, and then we had Trinity. It was all feeding in there, getting their supplies from Greenspan. Greenspan, as I told you, was the capital of Bonavista Bay, North. How long have people been living in Greenspan? Back to 16, to, you go back in the 1600s. And where did they come from? Well, they came from, as Linda would know, from Poole, England, and from somewhere like there. Oh, fishing. They came over fishing, you know. But, uh, as I say, then, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the most that ever lived in Greenspan, <coughs> uh, because it was an island, well, I would say it was around about 1,800 people. That was the most uh, uh, people that ever lived there. And you know, how many there today? And the dad today, she's down to about four hundred. Hmm. Well, that's changed, eh? Yeah. Well, Greenspan had a courthouse. It had a policeman. It had a magistrate. It had a customs officer. In which that would clear all. The, the customs officer's job was for the schooners going to the Labrador. You had to go from all around the bay. 
all around Bonavista Bay, you had to go to Green's Pond to get, get your vessel schooners cleared from the customs house. And that's the only place that would do it, was Green's Pond. And anywhere else on the North Coast? It no, they, not, not in, 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 in Bonavista Bay, not in Bonavista Bay, no. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere else where you get your clearance because uh, they, had, they had a customs officer there, they had to come there. And then they go uh, on the Labrador and bring home and loads of fish. There's, uh, in, uh, there's carters like, uh, we call them captains, eh? Because he was captain. There's Captain Jim Carter, and there was George Carter, and there was Fred Carter, and there was Gus Carter. That's four brothers. But this story, when the fishery, when they were finished with the fishery in the fall, they would go up, you know, you call, from Green's Pond on, there's no wood on Green's Pond on, they had to go up in the bay, because in the bay, up in the bay for uh, wood. This particular time, the four brothers left the, together. Captain Jim, Captain George, Captain Fred, and Captain Goss, or Skipper, we used to call him. He sailed a phone, sailed the guap. And so they said, well, who's going to get there first? So they put all the canvas that they could get on. And it blew a storm of wind. And Fred Daring, the, the kind, he was a D-A-R-I-N-G, Daring man. He wouldn't lower no canvas by no, and brought a storm. And the schooner was just listing out. And over she goes. <laughs> she ran over. And the other three brothers in their scorners never stopped to see what happened. Whether they were drowned or not. <laughs> no. They were on for going and they men. Something. The next day, we were small fellas. They came down. Skipper. We were wondering. The mail boat came. The mail boat come to bring find then. Small boat bring the mail. And our skipper Fred, or Captain Fred's crew, came down on the mail boat. Which is corner? Corner was further from Fair Island. Came out and he tore the ring, got the canvas off her, and tore her, tore the ring, and you know, got her fixed up. When they didn't, no, no, they never drowned. One of the fathers died years after it threw a fright. He never got over it. Okay. No. He was cooked. He was down down cooking when it happened. He never really got over it, but he lived for some time. But he said that was it. He threw that. But, no, this is uh, what was going on in them years. What did uh, they die of afterwards? This other? Yeah. Well, Again, as I had to tell, because you're going back now in the 20s, for me to tell way first in the 20s, you know, as I had to know what he did, but uh, he died at the age of 29, he was a young man. So you think it might have been Yeah, he got a, a, a fright that uh, uh, something might happen to change him, you know. And he never got really got over it. What was that you were telling me, one of those lights and the shipwreck? Well, again, this is it again. Um, they always said there was a schooner went ashore in Fox Harbor Cove, in which is a cove on the mainland across from Greens Pond, probably three miles from or three, three or four miles from Greens Pond. And that schooner came in from Bonav across Bonavista Bay, was coming in for to go down the tickle, they call it down to a pond tickle. But poor judgment, the story goes, the poor judgment, instead of going down to the tickle, he went right for the land, but he didn't know that he was going for the land because the weather was bad. And in Fox Harbor Cove, that's where he let, she went ashore. And they all jumped out, but they all drowned. And the schooner was smashed to pieces. And his name was Pat, 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 I always heard, Patty Poor. Now that could be Patrick. I don't know. But the wind was southern. Well, it had to be southern for southerly wind. 
and the wind was southerly, and it went that it came in on that southerly wind. And then every all the time, I saw it my own self against the southerly wind when the wind is coming southern. You will see that light coming up around and going right in that same cove that these people jumped the shore and was drowned. That that is that you know that is true. You saw the light yourself. The eyes did see me light. I I was. Well, there was a light on the water. On the water. Yeah. Not in the air. No, no, on the water. Now, as I say before again, I don't know. I can't prove that with those reflections of anything. But that light actually was there, and it done. It it came the same way this gun went. Went right into that cove. Any other people ever see the light? Oh, hundreds of them. Hundreds of them. What? No. no. Everybody, yes, hundreds of people. At different times. At different times. Well, again, it's this wind. Yeah. And let the wind blow opposite that. Nothing. Nothing. Well, that shipwreck happened before. I mean, again, that's going back before my, you know, before my time. And you still see the lights going into Oh, yes, yes, yes. And do they still see it now? I guess up to present day you go there. Mm -hmm. If you might go there in Greenspan and uh, look at it, I mean, again, I don't, I couldn't say it. But I know I have because I saw it my own self. Mm -hmm. saw that light, yeah. Mm -hmm. All these things did that. Yeah. Strange things, isn't it? Yeah, now I might tell you this little one. Uh, time of making money. For the first five cents that ever I made, I was in school and I came out of school. And a man by the name of, we call him Jimmy Burt. The name is James, as well, we call him Jimmy. And he said, do you want to make some money? And I said, yes. He said, come with me. Okay. I always went home, carried on my school bag, I whatever it was, and went with him. He had a piece of rope. He said I was away all the summer in, in to grandpa's working in whatever he's working at in grandpa's. Some fellows went on the sea and most most of us went on the sea and some more went on the land. And he was he worked on the land. So he said to me, Do you want to make some money? And I said, Yes. So he should come with me, as I said to just say. And we went up on Green's Pond Island, and I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to look for my sheep. He said, I got the rope to get the sheep, and I wants to get the sheep and kill her for her, so they're getting late in the fall of November for Christmas. So the two of us went on, and we came up on the sheep, and he said, this is my sheep. Like you wouldn't. So he got the rope, he put the rope around the, the sheep's neck, and he's going to take her on the back of Greenspan on and going down through on the back of the road. When Harry Pond, the fellow from Greenspan, named Pond, same name, you know, Greenspan, but this is a Pond, he came running up through and he said, uh, What are you going with that sheep? <laughs> and he said, uh, Jimmy Burton. He says, I ain't going to take the sheep home, that's mine. No, he says, not your sheep, he says. So, you know, he had a, a tag around the sheep's neck, but he put her Harry Pond in the summer. His father's name was Andrew Pond. So, th th this wool came out over, and you couldn't see that. So, Harry put his hand in around, and got this, uh, what's the name out? Uh, ticket out, is the way I call it. Ticket is a piece of cardboard. AP, right now. Andrew Pond. And mm -hmm. certainly Jimmy Burton couldn't claim it. So we had to let go of the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know. The sheep said, uh, we got nothing now. And went on across Green's Pond on and got another one. Get on to I don't know who. But he put the rope on it again. And went on. So he said, uh, I said, I'm going to pay you now. He said, that's, you know, if we work for, the, for that, that evening, like coming to school and getting dark, whatever it was. And he had a black purse in this, be all black purse. I pulled out a pot. He gave me five cent piece. <laughs> that's what I made it. First five cent piece. 
And my uncle, which is, which is Wiley's father and, and Lester's, he said he could do it. He could put that house there. So he tried it, and he put the, and he got that house launch right from the from where he was there down to where he were, where these or the people other people said it couldn't be done, but it was done. It's still standing there down to today. You went to Wings Valley, sure you see him house. The Roman Catholic ch uh, Church was there, and all the RC people. Jenny all died out in Greenspan in my time, there was a few families there. But my grandfather put the, the cross on the chapel. And when he put the cross on the chapel, he said, that cross would never come down off of that chapel. He said, he don't care how hard it blows. And what happens? The church will go first before the dead chapel stands as long as the church is there. And up to my time, and I can remember quite well, that ch that cross stood there, stood there, and it stood there till every all the bottom part of the church, all the canes, all taken around, and the cross still stood there. You know, I mean, a man that knew his work, eh, said that wouldn't come down, you know. Right and he was right on there, you know, things like out of that, you know, you know, you were almost thinking it would come down, but it didn't. Lynn was telling me that there was a positive about the, the haunted house or something. The house that was monstrous and then the old house was on the old house. Oh, is that actually a pond? Yeah. Well, Mam's old house? No, not, it's not Mam's old, no. No. No, my, my mother, see, my mo my mother in Greenspan lived on Ship Island. Now this is not this is an island from Greenspan Island. Got to go across in them days on a ferry, and a drawbridge used to put up. And in the su in the summer, for the boats go up and down, they take the drawbridge down, and the boats would go up and down through. So if you go fishing in the winter, they would put the drawbridge up again. But my uh, Mother's parents, they died at an early age, I and mean, she was taken, uh, well, somebody uh, like uh, Elred Carter, another Carter, who was the her, he took her, and my mother was, uh, he, he, she, she, she grew up with them, eh? And uh, her other sister went to down the shore somewhere with Sainsbury and they looked after her because her parents died. But her parents were really wicked, mother said. They were that wicked that, that was what she said. I only quote what she said. And they, she said that the spirit, she was, she was called a spirit. They blame it on now because nobody didn't want to go talk about it. Now you were at the Greenspan tomorrow and Sam, as mom, Brother, you, now Jesus, don't go talking about that, because he won't get outdoors them all. You get, you know, you'll have a storm. My mother said, my mother said, uh, they had a lamp upstairs, and something came and took that lamp and went around, and you know, like inside the house, inside the house. And there's no one living there. Oh, what? Oh, oh yes, yes, you were living there. When you were living there. Somebody just coming with lamps. Just coming with lamps. Went around like that. No, they, they, they don't know. What did your mother say about well? They don't know. They just say blame it on the spirits, as I say, as spirit. Yeah. So her parents, the wicked ones. Yeah. But they were too wicked. They, they, were, they were really wicked. <laughs> Drinking. Yeah. They, they didn't live very long. They, they died. They, they killed themselves drinking. Whatever they could drink, moonshine, whatever. Yeah. Rum. The rum was cheap. Who told you about that? Well, my my mother heard my mother talk about it, and her and her sister. And they think they used to think that if you talked about that, uh, you stormed them or something. Hmm. Hmm. They say that you don't want to, they didn't want to talk about that type of thing. No, what I'm what I'm talking about is now is that was called when you go across it as as years went by, 
people wouldn't pass line by that ocean. The ocean's gone now for years. People wouldn't pass line by that ocean after these people died. Because he's afraid to pass along by because so that's that was the spirit scene there, a spirit scene there, something like that. You know, that, that went down through ages. He was actually afraid to, to walk along, afraid to see the spirit. Now, if you went to Green's Pond tomorrow and went into Sam Carter's and talking about that, Jesus, first thing Sam, cut that out right away. Don't go talking about spirits. Because we won't get outdoors tomorrow, we'll have a storm or something. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right, that's right. I'm the only no, just no. Hmm? In Green Spawn, in the Depression years, I suppose I don't know what would happen anywhere else. I can't speak for him, but I'll tell you what did happen in Green Spawn in Depression years and before Depression years. Because I left Green Spawn in 1933. And it must have been in the twenties when a man and his wife froze together in bed when they had no bed clothes. Go on. Yeah. Their names were Billy Burry and Donnie. And Donnie, these used to call her, I suppose it's what was they? Diane or something. <laughs> Donnie used to call her. Don't Two of them. When they went to the house uh, to see, you know, they were dead. Froze dead and no bed clothes. You were down there? Yeah, oh yeah. They, they actually froze there. No clothes. They had no bed clothes. Oh, Jesus. Well, there's another. Well, I don't know where bad management. That didn't happen to. That didn't happen to all. We lived down there. My father was on, actually, well, really, it was, I'm trying to say, is my father was on. There was only two of us, George and I. And uh, getting back, we. Uh, we didn't know nothing about those ideas. My father was always working. Oh, we never with a job, eh? Because it's the kind of person he was made up of it. But now these were probably big families and poor management. But then that man, Donnie Burry, and his I don't know if they, as far as I remember back, I don't know if they had many children or no, but they actually froze it in. And there's another man down there, Stephen Burry. Stevie, we used to call him. He had very little education, and he used to go around the island of Newfoundland, or he used to go around Bonavista Bay North as a collector for weights and measures them days, to uh, see if the weight the weighing machine was correct, you know? And, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he was really the, in that uh, bad a condition, the, Depression, uh, the, the times were so bad that then I was in his house and I saw this myself that they had to drink out of tin cans. Huh. Yeah. No glasses or anything? Not a thing, sir. They had to drink out of tin cans. If you want a cup of tea, if you had tea, what, you know, you drank out of a tin can and never had a cup. Huh. And he had never had, now, as I say again, just, that was a lot on poor management. And then on the other side was like this, that uh, he had no wood to burn. Sure he never had no coal. And he had a hen's house. So at this time, this particular time, he said that uh, to the hens, fly to hell, he said to him, <laughs> to the hens, you know. <laughs> I want your house, he said, for fly to hell for refuge, he said. I want your house, he said, for, for, for to burn, for splits. And he let the hens go, and he knocked the house down, and he burned it. <laughs> Poor old hens died too, I suppose. Oh, so I guess he did. Did he have youngsters? He had, uh, oh yes, there's only one living, and all this is, that's the oldest. The odd, right. yeah. Really, really hard times, you know. The times was, there's a man by the name of Job James, as, uh, uh, Mom's, uh, uh, mom's mother's sister's husband. Oh, you go around with that. Yeah, yeah, we say Joyce, eh? <laughs> Joyce is a uh, 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 mother. Her sister married Job James. He was in World War One, the big one. Mm -hmm. Ah, she says no. 
World War One. Is that two? At least two two, two, two big ones. Two big ones. One using World War One. He was getting twelve dollars a quarter to raise his family on. Twelve dollars a quarter. Wow. Yeah. And he died at the age of forty-two through TB, starved to death, and went over and fought for his king and country. Now, we're getting just twelve dollars. And he was quarter. getting twelve dollars a quarter. Is that three months? Yeah. And, and he had about, well, he had, uh, oh, he had six children. His wife lived to fifty-two. Yeah, and he and he died of and he died of forty-two. And uh, that's what that's his wages. Two dollars a quarter. Yeah, that's what he's getting. When you were living in Greens, Roy, yeah. was there ever any other, like you talked about the, uh, the, the the bows and the lights and so on, was there ever any other stories that you used to hear about, you know, things like that? Strange happenings that they couldn't explain? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, that I don't remember, you know, not because about uh, things that, did, you know, they saw things, you know, but then again, you know, it's hard for me to tell you, because I would be in it from somebody else, but if I had to tell you, well, I want to know me own stuff, I thought, you know, like... But like, you could tell me, for example, like, what other people would tell Well, you. like other people would say, you, well, we probably...